We're back with Jesse here. We just finished up the 413 coupe and kind of reviewing that. But I told Jesse we wanted to have a sit down to interview and really just kind of ask you how you got started. Tell us about the business, maybe some advice for other people in yeah. the hot rod industry and uh, maybe some influences. Yeah. And I promised Jesse, we've already done one retake because our mics were screwed up, <laughs> but uh, it is a one take interview. So if we good. mess it up for you, that's okay. That's right. Yeah, yeah. we can. We can stumble through it and uh, regroup and keep rolling. We can. <laughs> and the main goal during this is not to hear myself talk. I told Jesse we want to hear him talk more than than me. So, um, kind of starting out, tell us a little bit how you got into it. Maybe some of your early influences, mm -hmm. um, early childhood. Maybe some of your favorite cars or what really brought you into the industry. Uh, well, it's it's all with dad. You know, he was he was always working on cars in the garage at night, and and uh, he was driving a milk truck. You know, from the earliest days, so he's worked 12 days a week. He'd get home around six o'clock. Good days at a little earlier, but I'd be home from school three three thirty in the afternoon. So I'd be out in the garage getting it warmed up because it was Central Michigan. So <laughs> most time in the winter, we'd have to go turn the heat up in the garage. Then by the time he got home, we'd grab a quick bite to eat and then get out in the garage for a while and work till eight or nine o'clock and he was always working on something. So whether it was fixing a car, making a little extra cash or working on the hot rod. So, but it was just a small little two car garage. You know, it's bigger than that, but it was, we had space in there, but it only fit two, two cars in it at a time. And, and uh, yeah, he'd paint the cars in there, everything else. But that was, that was the true, that's what set the seed, I think, was that. And then moving along up through the years in high school and stuff, you know, I'd ha I had a room full of magazines of, you know, seeing Boyd and so, you know, Shaporis and, and those guys doing stuff, Bobby Alloway, seeing some of his stuff. And, and uh, I, th I think that was the real goal, you know, um, I got, as I got a little older in college and stuff, you know, Chip was on the scene and, and all those guys really doing some really neat stuff. And, and uh, I was trying to soak that up as much as I could. And then I got the opportunity down here in Alabama where my mom's side of the family is from. Uh, happened to be Paul Atkins' hometown and where he worked. So dad and I went and visited him once and uh, struck up a deal to where I could work with him hmm. sweeping floors and stuff on the, you know, during the summers between high school. So I'd come live with my grandmother and my mom's mom and live with her and, and uh, go work for Paul, you know, working well that turned into working on the cars, you know, pretty quick. He got, he got me busy doing that. And so, and that was really good in the sense that I got to work on, you know, some high end cars. Uh, I distinctly remember one, Alan Johnson, he's a few years ahead of me uh, in age, but it, he was getting his start when I was just at the end of high school. And I still remember being able to work on his 3740 did for himself, you know, when he was first coming right. out. And, uh, you know, so that's, that's a really cool thing to be able to say that I was, you know, had a, a you know, I got a little hand on that car, <laughs> you know, in the beginning, but it was pretty neat. Well, uh, yeah, and then it just kind of blossomed from there. Dad finally got to where he had a chance to sell the route out in Michigan. And so he, he went ahead and um, sold out because I didn't want to grow that with him. I told him, I was like, I want to work on cars, so not haul milk, so. Uh, he decided to sell out. We moved south, and uh, I guess the rest is history. That was about 25, six years ago. Wow. And, uh, so then we. So no college. It, I've got that was kind of your college education almost. Yeah, I've got a. I've got a. It was. Yeah, definitely. But you know, I have some college. Uh, I never finished. Never got a degree in anything. But um, it just seemed like a waste to me. And I don't know if my opinion is, hasn't ever changed to that for you know, young guys <laughs> or young gals, you know, going to school. My kids, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to push them to go to college, but, you know, we'll see if, we'll see what happens, you know, if they actually want to go. If they don't want to go, I'm cool with that as long as they're finding something and, and, and uh, doing it the way they want to do it and something they, they, uh, happy with doing, excited about doing. I think that's more important than making, you know, big money at something. Right. So, yeah. Right. So we'll see. Now, what was your first complete build that kind of put you on the map. I remember when I first met you, mm -hmm. I, I, but I think you had already built something else prior to that car. Yeah. 
Um, uh, so what was what was that car? The, the first one was was uh, we co-built with Paul Atkins, and that was his. Uh, it was a Speed Star, one of Bobby Alloy's coupes. It was one of the first coupes that he offered. You know, he had the uh, Roadster, mm -hmm. and then uh, he started coming out with coupes. Well, we uh, built built that car with Paul in the shop, the new shop, and uh, uh, we as we were putting it together, it was getting nice, and the timing was working out. Uh, Paul said, hey, we ought to take this thing to Detroit, and so we loaded the car up, went up there, finished it up, got up there, and I'll be damned if we didn't, you know, win a Riddler with it. So that was kind of the first car out of the What year would that have been? That was in oh, 2000. 2000. Yeah, it was in 2000. 2000 or 2001. It's 2000, I think. Yeah, it was year 2000. Up there. So not dating yourself here, but <laughs> how old would you have been at that time? I don't know. I'm 49. Mid-20s? Yeah, it was early to mid-20s. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm 49 now this year, so yeah, I'm 24. Now, I remember meeting you in a Columbus hotel parking lot. Mm -hmm. uh, you had the Red Roadster. I think you guys made those bodies or something like that. We were we were working with a guy in Louisville, Kentucky, or just north of Louisville, Kentucky. And um, he was he did all the mold work and pulling the molds out of them. And they're, you can still get them today. It's just all the steel body stuff, mm -hmm. uh, you know, took hold, you know, post fiberglass stuff I guess but um, and but the thing you know we've done several Brookville bodies to match that fiberglass body which was raising the wheel wells extending the cockpit you know shortening the tulip panel uh, about three inches lengthening the door a couple inches and just making them a lot easier to use and get in and out and in the proportions we lengthening the wheelbase a little bit and it just made the proportions of the car a little better visually so and uh, but yeah that was that was uh, probably third or fourth car out of the shop. And that was one that I'd done for myself. I remember Bobby Alloy always telling me, he's always like, you need to build a car for yourself, build a car for yourself. And, you know, I thought it was cool. It was always very tough to do, but he, he, he was always trying to drive home, you know, get a few of them done. And then you finally get one paid for, you know, you don't, you, you get to keep all that money at right. the end. And, and, uh, but, hell I just dump it back into the shop you know we either buy new tooling or something else but I still continue to do that today uh, the most recent one I just finished was um, a little 70 911 Porsche that um, that we I did for myself and I got it down in Miami at some brokers right now and hopefully they can get a decent number out of that car down there so uh, so I built it had a little fun with it showed it around a little bit showed people we could do something besides just a hot rod or a muscle car. And so we did a little European car and, and did that. But again, that was back to what Bobby was saying. Always build one for yourself. It helps you generate something a little different. You can have some fun with it too. So, so how do you manage that? Because I, I talked to several hot rod builders and sometimes they build stuff for themselves and then others they're afraid to mm -hmm. because well, my client is going to get upset at me because I'm working on my own stuff instead of theirs. How do you manage that? Uh, we. I don't know. I guess I just, <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm just open with our customers saying, and sometimes they know, I guess I've been working on my own stuff dabbled through the years that it's all the customers that I have now um, know that I have them. I mean, there's been times where I've worked on stuff and it's probably irked somebody because I, I got that done quicker mm -hmm. than the other. But again, I didn't have that customer changing it three or four times on me. So as they, right. it was my own, I could just get it done and see my vision and it was there and done and go from there. So, um, that was the, that was the one time that I could, that I can recollect that it would have mm -hmm. done that. Other times it's just been me working on, you know, dad and I hammering on weekends and nights and outside of the customer's projects. So those are still getting done as well. So nothing really changed on mm -hmm. that side of it. So for the customers, so. Can you think of a car that or, or two that really stands out in your mind over the years that you felt, man, this was one of my favorites and maybe this is the reason why. Yeah, the very first one is uh, Jimmy Shaw's Maverick. Okay. Yeah, uh, that car was really challenging for me because of what he wanted to do with the car. Uh, you know, one of his uh, main requests was, I wanna be able to drive it across the country. I wanna, go over 200 in a standing mile and if i want i'd like to drag race it a little bit and uh, uh we've done a couple of those uh the going over 200 and and driving it uh, on long distances and the car does 
great. And then he had an unfortunate accident before he got into drag racing at some because we'd have to change some gearing in it because that's quite a bit different than mm -hmm. the standing mile stuff. But uh, but he was just cruising it, and lo and behold, that car got totaled out going about 50, 55 mile an hour. I didn't know that. Yeah, somebody bumped him and, oh. and uh, on the street. He hit a curb, hit, got into the gas, and it slung it around, and then he hit past across some lanes of traffic. Luckily, nobody was there uh, coming the other way and slapped a concrete wall with the thing. So that car's no longer. Well, it is. It is, but, but it's... it's... Yeah, we're waiting on a chassis right now. It is getting rebuilt as is, as it was. Uh, we hope to go back to the mile. We, we hit 202 with that car in a standing mile in Arkansas. And, uh, but our next goal is maybe two and a quarter with it because it had a lot left in it after after doing that. So we're, we're gonna do, do a few upgrades on it because that car's five, six years old now. And so there's some new stuff we can mm -hmm. throw at it. Uh, it's still gonna be the original engine, trans, had a Bowler trans, had a Bennett racing engine in it. Uh, it's twin turbo Ford uh, uh, engine. And uh, yeah, so we're, I'm just chomping at the bit to get chassis from the Roadster Shop boys, the new one. And the other one's probably dad's truck because mm -hmm. it's been in the family since I was a year old. Well, it's been in the family before I was born, I think. But then he's, he actually got it on the road using it uh, with the paint that's on it right now when I was a year old. So, And so that's always been through. We've learned a lot on that truck, Dad and I and my guys, uh, putting part, throwing parts at it. And uh, even some of the industry has throwing parts at it, prototype parts, because they know we go out and use it. And, and um, uh, we've we've gained a lot of knowledge out of that thing and i hope to redo that thing give it a good freshen up he's set sixty thousand miles on it i think hmm. and and in its current form right and uh so it's you know we'll, we'll keep the we've got the roadster shop chassis under it and he's got we've got a little don hardy ls engine in it right now and bowler trans and and all that stuff's working fine but we might we might bump it up on this next iteration amd is going to help us out with some desperately needed new sheet metal for the thing <laughs> so and uh we're, we're not going to change the color or what it is we just want to want to get it a little little better than what it is right uh, yeah just do another right. version of it so we'll see what happens with it here in the next mm -hmm. year or two well i, I got to go quickly back because it's on my mind is the maverick okay and that was one of the first cars I actually rode with oh, you Oh, that's in. right. We did go for a ride in, in that, Kentucky. Yeah. And I thought you were just going to take me kind of up the road a little bit. And we pull out of the fairgrounds there, the horse park, and yeah. got to a very quick uh, rate of speed. <laughs> and I was, whoa. <laughs> and then we, we went down the highway and back. And uh, I still have that video where I've, I've posted it, but not showing the speed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and good. we won't mention the speed on it, but <laughs> um, we went to speed limit. Yeah. Um, but what a cool car. And that thing, just going around the curves. Yeah, it was amazing how that car handled. It's good all around car. You know, that's testament to Roadster Shops Engineering and their, you know, their product that they're putting out. And, uh, but we, uh, but that car was just good all around. It is good all around, it will be again, but um, <clears throat> you know, it's just a nice, the engine and it's just a monster, but we have it detuned. Even to go those speeds, it's detuned. So it's gonna live a long time in that car. And that's, that's what allows him to get down the freeway and, and go uh, many miles in it on a road trip if he wants mm -hmm. to in it, so it's cool. So what piece of advice, so you've been in business how many years now? Uh, we've been, Dad and I've been rolling 20, November will be 25 years for the shop, so. So starting out, looking back 20 plus years ago, if mm -hmm. you could tell yourself back then what you know now, what advice would you have told yourself back then? <clears throat> or for a new shop, somebody else getting into the business, now that you're more established, yeah. what would you say to them? I was very fortunate back then that I had mom and dad so close to me. And mom, she, she was very sharp at helping run the books and so forth and dad has always been the workhorse and in teaching me work ethic and everything else but uh, probably the the biggest thing is get your damn nose in the books and keep that shit straight before <laughs> <laughs> before you go on doing anything else and that's hard for us creative types because it's you know that's always secondary it's always been for me too but here here in the past five six years um you know, I've I've really dove into that side of it and so forth. And man, I wish I would have would have been able to do 
I wish I would have taken more of an a, a action with that side of it in the past. I would have been even more better off than, than what I am now as improper English, but that's all right. <laughs> so be more We're business minded, rod, not just yeah. creative. Yeah, and just, you know, you don't have to get, just, just get yourself, just get yourself um, well versed with, uh, you know, P and L's and cash flow and- For those work. that don't know what a P and L is. Yep. Profit and profit loss. And loss. <laughs> yeah, at the end of the year, look where you're at, look where you're going, look what you need, you know, and set some goals for yourself. Uh, another key factor of that is just, um, Figuring out how to um, project project some of the um, projects, so you're not surprising yourself, you're not surprising your customer at the end, and then it's it's easier to get that money at the end. And sometimes you just you know if if you go into a project and you have a target and you know you're going to blow that target out of the water, you know realize why and what's going on because of that and then to have that discussion early on with your customer so you you're not railroading him or her and and uh, being able to you know have the outlay of cash on their end mm -hmm. too so but yeah so I think those two things you know just just keep the just of it all you know just keeping your nose get your nose in the books early so you know so you have that side nice and clean it makes a creative side so much easier because you're not stressing out on the other side. Not to say you're not going to have the stress even later on, but it, you still, it, it makes it easier and more fun. It seems like in a, today's world where it's all social media, mm -hmm. do you think, or is it just maybe I think that a lot of people try to play a bigger role than what they need to play uh, perception-wise? Like, I got to get a big rig. I got to have this big fancy building. I mean, look at Jesse's shop. I mean, mm -hmm. I got to have that like right now to be impressive. Yeah, yeah that's... Um, <clears throat> I, I've chased after that really hard early on, and no, you don't, you, you, that's a, it's good to go slow on that. You know, keep your, you know, do it comfortably, do it um, cautiously. And uh, this, we're in this, I've done this, a lot of this is the hard work Dad and I've done over the 20 plus years we've been, but the other is I've reached out of the cars, so doing some other real estate stuff here and there, and and that's helped me get into the size we're in now and, and where we're at with the with the building per se. The shop really hasn't changed all that much. We've grown the machining side a little bit with another guy and some more machines, but uh, but yeah, it's it's uh, you know I I took note of what my customers were doing and why they had so much money to pay me to build these cars. And so I got, I got curious and it took me a while to get curious, but once I did, I was started listening a little more. And, and then I found, you know, something else that I liked doing. And that was find a piece of property and uh, either, even just hanging on to it. Just, it was exciting owning it. And then, right. and then you get to go through the deal of selling it again. And that was exciting. So, or it is exciting. And so I can, I'm doing a few of those too outside of this. I'm so fun with it. I know in your new space here, we have a brand new building out front. So tell us a little bit about the latest venture. Yeah. <laughs> what, what's going to be out in front of the shop and uh, kind of the vision for that? Yeah. The, <clears throat> I stumbled across this property. It was completely wooded and, um, uh, which you would never know that. <laughs> no, no, you wouldn't, because it was. It's. Uh, it's. We've been here a little over two years now. I think. Uh, well, no, this is February. So February is two years that we've uh, been on this property. Or maybe it's three. Sorry, it, time goes by so damn fast. But when did we come down? Because we came down when it was being framed up and that's the concrete right. yeah. was here. That might have been two years ago. Yeah, it, it could have been. But anyway, either way, three years I think maybe from when I purchased this property. We cleared it, and then uh, it's got a cool old barn on the front. There was an old house; it wasn't worth saving, so we took that down. But the barn was kind of cool, worth saving. And I always thought, <clears throat> I always look up to Eric Pratt uh, out at Pinkies, mm -hmm. and he's got a cool, you know, started with a little cool brewery in his place. And I've never had a shop big enough to put the little brewery off to the side. I've always been a fan of craft beers and and. And that stuff, I I enjoy the artistic side of it, and and how who don't like drinking a beer too. So, but uh, um, I always thought that was cool that Eric always did that, and I looked up to him for that. And I've always I've been bending his ear on it for quite a few years now. Well, 
I was, I always thought maybe the barn, I could do a neat little brewery in it or something like that. Well, then an opportunity arose just this past year, year and a half where a local guy who is a brewer with quite a bit of an experience um, was looking to partner up and do a brewery here in town. We have another brewery in town that's quite successful and they do really good, good job over there too. And it's a good, pl neat place. Um, but, uh, uh, I thought I could do something maybe a little different out here. And uh, so we, we decided to partner up. So, and then um, we have a third and another guy, another silent partner. So there's three of us in the brewery. And then, so I built the building. I figured, well, if I build a building this size, you know, if worst case scenario, it'd make a good warehouse down there that I could <laughs> lease out to. So, but for now we're gonna do a, we're gonna do a brewery in it. And then I've leased out uh, a third of the space, third of this building to a guy in Northern Alabama that has a really cool winery up there that he's, he's doing his own uh, grapes. He's still, he's getting them established, but he's sourcing some of his grapes from out, out West in Sonoma area. But, um, but here in another year or two, I think he'll be furnishing all his own grapes out right there in northern Alabama. Uh, this is going to be his second location. So, and then he's going to do a couple wood-fired pizza ovens in it. And so that'd be a pretty good thing. And then we've got a pretty good size production on the beer side of things too. So there'll be a little bit of distro, but uh, mostly feeding the tap room. So we're excited about that. I'm going to focus on some good live music and lots of events. Hopefully uh, with your help and a few others, we'll, we'll, uh, uh, have a really good open house, maybe a yearly car show here, small, mm -hmm. maybe two, three hundred cars. Uh, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to mimic kind of some of the stuff that uh, Jason and and uh, the boys have done out there at gathering at the Rock, and mm -hmm. uh, we may not get their same feeling, but yeah, so we could uh, maybe have a, have a have a cool event in the fall when it's nice, do a nice drive out here and then come back here, end up here, and then we have a cool restaurant and place to have some good beers and, and all that. So. so when do you think that'll actually be done? We're looking early summer right now okay. with that. So the 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 uh, brewery's come, or the building itself's coming along well. I think they're they're roughing in plumbing and, and wiring, and then uh, soon after that, will come the HVAC and, and uh, finishing the interior walls. Uh, then by then, by when that's done, the doors should all be on it because it's got a bunch of glass doors that open and and um, yeah, we're just trying to create a really nice space to hang out. You know, it feels good being there. Let your kids run if you want while you're having a beer and and uh, listening to some good music, hopefully, and and uh, just have a good environment with that. And it's it's easy. It's it's nice out here. So we get some. I've oriented the building like I have because. Uh, if you guys are here late enough today, you'd, you'll figure out, figure that out with the incredible sunsets that we get off to the to the west here. So, and that building's mainly facing west, so it ought to uh, have some good views while you're setting any place in it. So that's good. the nice thing about it, it's right off the highway. Yep. Right off of 65, yep. right? Coleman, Alabama. Exit 305 and state, uh, head, a head west route? a little bit. 20, 222? Yeah, it's, or? Count, it's a county, county road. road. Yep, county road 222. And, uh, but yeah, so we're, we're doing that. We're naming the brewery uh, Ethos, Craft Brewing. And uh, Ethos is a Greek term of Ethos, Pathos. And uh, I can't remember, there's some others. I can't remember them all, but <laughs> the brewer come up with that name. But, uh, um, uh, but it's a, Ethos is like a sense of community and, and um, well standing in communities, something like that. So uh, actually I'm gonna put the definition out of the, out of the dictionary on the wall so I can remember what it means all the time. So, cause I, I, I always forget, I have to look it up at times, but, uh, but yeah, so it'll be good. It's, it's hopefully we'll catch some traffic off of there. I'm working with a guy, uh, one of my customers actually over in Atlanta area, he's trying to get to be a certified Tesla charging station. Um, I'm not a big fan of electric cars, but uh, obviously being in the hot rod stuff, but uh, they, they got their place and they got their part. But it'd be, um, we maybe someday I can get a couple Tesla charging stations down here. So that'll end up on the map if you own a Tesla. Mm -hmm. So that'd be kind of cool. I figured that'd be a nice stopping point for, I, I would, it I takes would stop there. to charge anyway. So. That's right. I'd stop there and <laughs> yeah. charge my Tesla and have a pizza and right. a beer or something. So, but, uh, but yeah, so anyway, we've got, and then the city has a cool, uh, 
city has a really cool campground just down the road, a half mile down the road from us, and their property actually butts up against our property here. And they've got walking trails and golf cart trails through there. So we're gonna uh, try and get access to that. So anybody coming in uh, wanting to camp down here, they can, they can grab a golf cart from the city. They can just rent it, pop down here and stay off the highway if they want. Let them have a couple more beers if they want. Right. So, <laughs> so, and I've got two full hookups down by the barn too. So if anybody wants to rent a spot from us, they right. can as well. So, and uh, so we'll see. Yep. But uh, yeah, soon I'll have this all paved and uh, get all get rid of all this gravel around here. And uh, that's always a shame. You, the 413 is actually a perfect car for out here. You can go have some fun with it. Dad's yeah. truck, not have to worry about yeah. it. But whenever we get like the XL27 or something like there's something nicely, freshly finished, gosh, it's a pain trying to go test drive them. So I'm, but I waited purposely held off to do the paving around here um, just to let the roadbed up here settle and, and then keep the heavy traffic, the heavy uh, construction traffic off of it with that other building being built so and that's we're pretty we're getting close to that so here in another month or so i'll have it nice and paved so when we do have a car show out here it'll be be pretty cool you'll be able to drive Real nice a, drive a nice car up here yeah. and not worry about getting it all dusty and dirty or stone yeah. chips so and from nashville i mean it's two hour two drive. hour drive yeah so, easy two hour drive so pretty drive too right right down 65 and um atlanta is about two and a half uh two and a half three hours depending on which way you go up here so uh, memphis is about three hours so we're, we're uh huntsville and birmingham they're just an out we're dead in the middle and an hour away so mm -hmm. from, from each airport so yeah it's a nice nice situated area coleman's a nice little town it's uh we're probably we might be approaching thirty thousand maybe in the town 25 25 to thirty thousand and um you know so there's you know, i think there's a good bit of uh you know, we'll have a good bit of support in, in the brewery, so to be able to support it anyway. Right. So enough population to support it. So. Where do you see Greening Auto Company in the next five plus years, right? Looking into yeah. the future, we've looked backwards. Let's look into the future now. Where do you see yourself or more properties venturing out more or? Yeah, in that side of it, yeah. And I have a different different thing doing that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'll probably myself personally focus a little more on, on some of that stuff. Uh, the shop side, we may we may grow a little bit on the build side just because of the demand out there. It's it's uh, it's really good work that I I can I have really good customers right now that are wanting to keep me busy, willing to keep me busy. So you know I want to be able to um, support that on that side of it. Uh, another thing we want to do is for sure is grow the machining more than I have. I've been trying to grow that for years and years, and that's been a learning curve for me on that side of it. But Talk about that real <clears> quick, because we mentioned that in a previous video, yeah. as far as, you know, I think a lot of people know that you do the wheels, but mm -hmm. I don't know if they knew that you do the valve covers or other specialty parts. Mm -hmm. And I mean, yep. you did a few little machine pieces on the 413 coupe for us. Yep. Um, and but talk about that. Yeah, we, we uh, we're, we're trying to, reduce our lead times on that and that's i've got enough equipment to do that now it's just personnel so finding the right people to help us with that uh we just hired on greg uh, and he's from michigan area but he he's helping with cad work so he helps george in there quite a bit with the cad you know the load that load the cad work that it takes wes he's he's just jammed up but somehow i don't know how he some days i don't know how he keeps up with it all but he he does really well with it and wes has been with us 15 plus years but and has grown with us on that side of it but yeah, he's just sharp as attack on the software side you know writing the tool paths and all that running the machines and uh, figuring out the fixturing and all that but so that's allowed us to do a bunch of private labeling stuff for uh, other companies and and uh uh, and then, you know, keep our stuff, uh, you know, our production line stuff stocked on the shelf, trying to anyway. And, uh, uh, but yeah, so uh, the work is there, the workload's there. If I get our lead times down, I think there'd be even more work, you know, because I could get the product, you know, the one-off pieces to people quicker, mm -hmm. which, would, uh, which would be a really good thing. And because uh, I know on our end, I don't get our parts for our projects all that quick right because uh, they're behind customers stuff on, on that stuff but you know we we're 
we try and juggle that stuff around pretty good but but yeah so so as far as growth for us i think you'll see it in the machining side to where we can somebody call us and want to settle complete one-off wheels my goal is to say is you know let's get the let's get the design finaled in a week and once the customer's happy with the design we're okay to machine it um we have stuff sitting there ready to rock right. and roll and i can get them to them in three to four weeks so and then their project that because usually it's shops you know the the other builders are coming to us getting those wheels and then i can i can get those um uh, get that get their parts to them that they need to keep moving that project forward in that shop too so just like we're doing in our in you know with our projects in this shop so how many total people you have working for you now i think they're with dad including dad and i i think there's 12 of us out there so yes and then, and then the machining it's three guys that are there so three committed guys to that area and then the rest of us all kind of float around wherever we need to be sometimes we'll get a machining job out of there and we've quoted the paint work on it and everything else, all the complete finish work on it so the paint shop guys dad and chance down there they'll have to do some work on the machining job and then um, other times there'll be some weld work or some fab work on a on a one-off machine part you know a project that we have so it'll come over here to the to the fab guys and we're welding or brush finishing or you know metal finishing something so yeah so it it uh it's uh it, it's definitely a shop effort but we have our zones so mm -hmm. we have our zones but we we cross quite a bit through throughout the week so if i wanted a set of wheels or or valve covers i mean mm -hmm. we have your headlights for the mm -hmm for the five window build and I think tail lights as well and yeah. some other pieces. Yeah. How would I go ahead and get a hold of you or who do I contact? Do I yeah. go on the website? Where do I go, go for You can those go things? on the website, the info, that, that email actually goes to me. Sometimes you'll get an answer from George or Greg and uh, cause if it's a wheel question or something like that, I'll usually forward that message right to, sometimes I'll answer it directly if I can to help keep the load off of them but usually it's something I need them to answer. And, um, and so you'll get a, yeah, so you can go straight to the website. You can direct message us on Instagram. That'll, that for now is coming to me. And again, you'll, you'll go there, you'll get a, um, you'll get an email address. You can email off of that. They'll send that out. And it's usually to George or Greg. And then that'll be the point of contact from there. So, and then from there, once you get what you want to do, we'll, we'll try and we'll get a scope of what it is. Um, we'll try and f we've done enough now we can say hey this you know a, a set of one-off wheels like you're looking to get w you know what we've grasped here is going to be roughly X amount of dollars and then they can say yay or nay if they want to go forward with it if they're okay with that then um, they can uh, send us a small deposit to get some CAD work done and then we need some information from them at that point, you know, backspacing, sizes, uh, bolt pattern, uh, what brakes you're gonna use. And then we'll, we'll, we'll quickly model up a, a wheel and CAD. And uh, if they give us the go ahead on it, we can directly quote it. You know, the, this is, we decide finishes everything else, then we'll do a hard quote on it up there so they know what it's going to be. The only thing they'd add to that would be some freight or shipping, okay. you know, at, whenever it's done. So, yeah, so that's, and then we try and, we try and hit some timing at that point too, which is quite a bit right now, but because right. <laughs> there's a bunch on the list, but right. that's, that's okay. Usually people are okay with that. And, and especially the builders, they, they can, uh, you know, they've, they know it's going to take a little while. They're, they know there's some lead time there because of the list is long, but that's what I want to remedy. That's the one thing I want to nice. try and tighten up if we can. So that's our goal right now. So. Well, coming to the end of our conversation here, is there any last pieces of advice or anything that you would share for someone either building a car, maybe someone getting into the hobby or a new, a new builder? Yeah. Any words of advice mm. for anyone? I mean, just, just, stay focused on the reason why you got into it which is the love the love for the cars and really the love for the people too and because there's damn there's some good people out here in this in the car business and it's that can that can be a lot of fun and also get yourself out of the shop every once in a while and go 
drive one of these things cross country or at least a couple states away or something. One, you're gonna learn a lot on the mechanics of it. Two, you're gonna have a, something to talk about. And uh, three, you're gonna have a damn good time doing it too. So yeah, it's always fun. Nice. Yeah. Now comment below. One of the things I was thinking about when we were putting this together was comment below in this video, because I had, and Kyle and I, we created probably 20 to 26 questions, but maybe put two or three questions. We're gonna pick maybe two questions and do a follow-up okay. in the comments below, <laughs> and we'll have Jesse answer those questions. We'll right pick on. out maybe two or three and try to follow up uh, and uh, give feedback on those. So what would you like to know from Jesse? And we're gonna pick out, again, two or three of those questions and uh, see yeah. if he can't answer in this video. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll give it a shot. That would be fun. Yeah. I'm a little scared because some of the people I know out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll pick them. <laughs> there you go. Okay, good. Well, okay. We'll you can scrub those. <laughs> we'll scrub yeah, those comments. Yeah, that's right. Okay, good. That's stuff. all good then. Yeah. <laughs> but until next video, Jesse, yeah. I appreciate you sitting down with us. Again, yeah. very much I appreciate your work on the 413 oh, Coupe. Yeah. Um, Thank you for letting us have a crack at it because that thing... That, uh, it's, it's just such a good looking car and it's such a cool car and and uh, I was so happy to be able to have a hand in it so that's yeah. pretty cool I, I you, you may get asked to have it borrowed so I might want to go run it somewhere <laughs> hey if you want to take it or take it to an event just come pick uh, it up you all heard that so yeah and I seriously hey I don't care yeah, yeah that's right? cool that's um, cool and that was one of the goals if you see us at an event with a car hey introduce yourself yeah um, you have a young kid that wants to sit in the car let me know and I'll, yeah, yeah. I'll open up the door I don't want you just helping yourself right right, but right I have yeah. no problem we've done that with the Roadster yeah. I want kids to enjoy this car get behind it feel it yeah or if you see us and you know it's your car um, just as much as ours. I want you to enjoy that. Yeah, but that's cool. uh, if you ever want to use it, I'm okay with it. Cool. That's As awesome. long as I'm not using it first. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. I so, get that. <laughs> yeah. If you like cool. today's video, give us a thumbs up. Again, comment below maybe some of the questions. Uh, we're planning on doing more of these videos in the future. We have several people in mind. So maybe comment below as well. Who would you like us to interview and ask some other questions to as well? But until next time, check out the opposingcylinders.com website. Give Jesse a follow on Instagram. Instagram is? Greening Auto Company. Greening Auto Company. We'll tag that below and we'll both see you on the road in the next episode. Cool. Thank you. Thanks. Yep. Thanks, bud.